All right, welcome to Live with Prima. I am Sharon, and I'm not going to pronounce my last name because nobody can pronounce it or spell it. Say it any way you want. Um, so we are here today, and we're going to introduce some of our art mediums, and we're going to make some cute little tags. I have this one right here, and this is using our coffee break line. Here, cover my face. That's even better. It's really dimensional. I mean, lots of layers, fun stuff on there. And then we have a different one, and this I went with more of a pastel theme on this. And I, w I hope you can kind of catch some of the dimension that's on there with our art mediums. I am ready to invest in a new webcam. I've had this one for, I don't know, how many years? Four or five years? And they get so much better. So I need to get a new one soon. All right. So I have one hour to get all of this done. So I talk really fast. I'm from the north. If you can't keep up, Carrie is here to mod. She's also from northern New York. So she can type really fast. She can type as fast as I talk. And um, if you have questions, let her know or she can text me and I'll try to back up and show you something. So don't be afraid to jump in the chat and ask questions as that's how we all learn. I learn something every time I mod a show. You, the guys or the gals and guys in the chat, they know so much stuff. I mean, seriously, we all share with each other and that's what's so cute, fun. So I have glass. I just put, you know, I had two weddings last year and we had a candy bar. We just got rid of the candy. Yeah, seriously. You think my kids would have ate it all, but they're sick of green and silver candy. And I threw them up there, and I'm going to fill them with Prima stuff now. <laughs> so, all right. Hey! Oh, I see so many wonderful people here. We, you know, Prima's like a big family. There's people that used to be on our design team. Hey, Daniela. People that submit to our contests all the time. Some of our guest designers, I see ambassadors on here, educators, design team, tons and tons of fans. I know Prima Love has like spread all over the world. Okay, so down to business. I'm gonna, let me just scroll the camera down now. Sorry for, don't get seasick. All right, that looks good right there, right? Ooh, sorry about that. Okay. So mixed media tags. When I was at CHA with Finna Bear, we were talking about her new art line. And um, she has art basics, art ingredients, and art extravagance. And we had discussed different ideas on how to like present our projects and, and make it more visual and easier to understand what we're putting together when we make projects. And we, I don't think we're the only two, but out of the talk we've had in our calls and stuff, we came up with art recipes. So we've been featuring different art recipes on our blog the last month, and I have two today. And they are on my blog. If Carrie can type that in. Um, I, it's a visual to show you what art mediums I used, and it has like a little close-up of the project. And we have an, a board on Pinterest, mixed media art recipes, that you can go to and see an art recipe and then the project next to it. So there'll be two different visuals. So you can go there, and you know what? I've noticed artsy people tend to be really creative in many arenas, and a lot of you are probably really good cooks or bakers. I used to be, and I kind of handed that off to my husband. Um, take the recipe and adjust it to what you like. Play around with it, experiment. Maybe some of them you won't work for you, and some of them are going to be your new favorite recipes. So that's the whole goal is to just to get you to play with it. So what we're going to do um, is this is our Finnebear or our, actually our Prima art medium brochure, and a lot of people worked really hard on this. It shows you the different products. It has application. It shows you pictures of what it looks like when it's dry. It has all the information with weight and item number for ordering. Lots of different lines. And it even includes the chalkboard paint. And then in the back, did I tell you we have amazing teams? 
the uh, the best. Seriously amazing. So lots of different samples from our gals and guys that design. And this little brochure is available for retailers. So if you are placing an order, let your salesperson know and you can get these. And I have to do a little sneak promo. I um, got one of these in my special delivery kit for September and that is coming the debut will be September 15th and Frank knows all about that he picks the products and puts them all together I hope this fits in the frame okay well it's a huge box look at that baby and you know what it is stuffed full I told Frank I wasn't gonna show a sneak peek so I'm not gonna show a sneak peek I'm just gonna ship it is full all the way to the top so if you get a special delivery in September you will get one of the art medium booklets and it is a wonderful guide I keep this on my um, table behind me and I flip through there all the time it's just it's very resourceful okay so if you have questions on any of the mediums and what they do that would be a great great resource for you any questions on that I have two other announcements art venture California January 6th and 7th it is booking you guys and it's going to be a blast it's right before CHA you get to work with all the new releases which haven't been shown you'll be the first ones to play with them Carrie can link you to that um, sorry I go really fast and people are asking about special delivery so um, there's a Facebook page wait special deliveries on live with Prima sorry I'm mixing up my stuff and art venture will be that event information is on our Facebook page and that is January 6th and 7th and then um, our next class is Jamie on Thursday night and that is 630 Pacific time she has the cutest shirt ever using her bloom girl stencil oh my gosh I am going to watch it Thursday night and I'm gonna make myself a shirt we all need our own little bloom girl shirt right okay so let me slide that out of the way here's what we're gonna work with today this is the coffee break collection this is cup of Joe it's black I mean seriously my cup of Joe is more like more sugar and cream and hardly any coffee but isn't that fun um, and lots of cups on the back this one I showed the yellow side because that's the side I'm using and my camera showing it is really bright it's a soft retro yellow and seriously is that not the prettiest page that is caffeine fix somebody's asking about special delivery that is available to anybody and it is a bargain so anybody can order that and it's free shipping in the domestic US addresses and then there's a reduced shipping um, for international okay this is another sheet we're going to use coffeeology and it has a really fun newsprint on the back and then of course you got to get a little pink in there this is aromatic blend a cute little cups and that's all I used to create this was a, and I'm not even using a lot of this you know when you make tags you have a lot left so you could easily do this with a 6x6 pad too okay I just don't have that so I went with my paper pad we're also going to use an A4 watercolor paper pad this is in the bloom collection oh my gosh the thickest watercolor paper it's amazing so we're gonna do something with that and Jamie's here she this is part of Jamie's line see your name right there whoops right there all cute and stuff and then moving along this is our new tag pad by Julie Nutting and there are 24 in there and that's watercolor paper and it is so fun you need these if you're just starting mixed media or you want to play around with a new technique or a new recipe this is what I would start on our tags and just try it I mean seriously if it if it doesn't work out flip it over and try again and if that doesn't work you got 24 times to get it right right okay so we're gonna be working with the tag pad and then I also have the 3 by 4 coffee break um, pad and these are double-sided cards they're so cute double double-sided is new to us this show 
and I've already torn this one apart picking out different designs and today is your day okay how fun is that so we'll be pulling pieces out of this to add accents onto the tag so I thought what would be smartest would be um, doing the art mediums first and then letting those dry I put my stuff in two different piles so I'm going to be like stretching and grabbing them so we're going to color our tags first get our all our art mediums done for both tags and then while they're drying we'll build on the other pieces so I'm going to pull out some color bloom sprays and I have three of them we're going to mix these two first and all we're going to do is just spray that whole tag and anytime I get a color bloom spray I open it up this one's brand new I tap that little tube and knock out anything that's settled in there get that cover back on and then really shake it up you can hear the marble in there then take off that little tab and you're going to prime it let me grab some paper towel first when you get it new you need to prime it isn't that the prettiest color and just to show you I have one that got really low and I added water to it so I just want to show you the difference in color let me do a side by side seriously you cannot tell it might be a little bit lighter but isn't that cool so when you use your bottle and it gets down to about there fill it back up with water you will get at least two bottles and you could even try three so let's go ahead and finish this tag and I did squirt in a little bit of um, summer sky this bottles well loved I'll tell you that let me knock it real quick tap the tube and that will keep the the clogging issue at bay so we're gonna just mix a little bit let me get all the corners covered in that any questions on the color bloom sprays I'm use, using glistening waves which is the oh, it's so pretty and then I'm throwing a little bit of summer sky on top I'm like getting it all over my fingers because I keep opening that tube up <laughs> okay so that one's set and we're just gonna let it dry and grab another tag let's flip this over I'm over spraying off my table so if my carpet is colored oh my gosh it'd be a pretty color this one we're just gonna do sunshine it is the softest prettiest color ever tap your tube shake it up I think that's a song from way back in my hippie days shake it up by the cars Okay, I think I'm dating myself I'll tell you my older brothers listen to it then I'll be like 10 years younger just spray this baby oh it's so pretty okay done we're gonna let that dry you notice look at this one it is not wrinkled it's not bubbled it's because the watercolor paper um, can take a lot a lot of wetness and it's not going to bubble and rip and tear on you all right so we're going to let that dry and then what we're going to do is we're going to start with the blue tag and let me get my art ingredients out we are going to use light paste and art sugar uh, how fun is that and I kind of went nutty with my theme because we're using coffee break we're making some cute coffee tags and I went with bubbles everywhere because that's how corny I can be and how punny so I have this bubble stencil we're gonna use how cute is that this is one of the new Finnebear um, stencils and I'm reading upside down 961299 should be the number okay and I know this may not be totally dry I might have to zap it just a second 
and then we're going to put our paste on here and I have to go off camera because my extension cord won't reach that far. Any questions you guys? This tag size is perfect and if you don't like it that long, it's, it's really made for her stamps. And I had a tag with a little boy. Well, I don't know what I did with that. But her stamps fit perfectly on the, these tags, most of them. So that's really cool. This blue is so pretty mixed together. The glistening waves and the summer sky. This is a little tip that I learned way back is when you're heat drying, if anything starts to curl, just flip over the other side and put heat on that for a little bit and it evens it out. I usually do that right when I'm at the end. Alrighty. So we have our tag and what we're going to do is just put the stencil on here. I don't want the really, really big circles. Well, maybe I should. I mean, if you're really boiling water, you can get some big, big bubbles, right? We're going to take our light paste and we're just going to smear it on there. Now, the middle of the tag is covered, so if you don't want to put paste on the whole thing, that's totally cool. You can see only part of it shows. And just to save you a little bit of money. Normally, I use like a hotel key to put my paste on but I went all fancy and got rid of my hillbilly way and I bought a palette knife. How cool is that? Now watch me not know how to use it. <laughs> okay. So just you only need a little bit. It's so good. I mean it goes a long way. So I can't do this upside down. Some people are really good at that. This is like spreading frosting but do not eat it, you know. It tastes horrible. It just is so creamy and oh, it goes on perfectly. When you have a big bubble, just make sure you smooth over that there. You know, like frosting, you want it to look really, really nice. Okay, I think that's good for the top. And what I'm gonna do, look at those fun little bubbles. Isn't that cute? I am going to scrape this up real quick and I'm going to do the bottom. Same part of the stencil, we're just going to keep one part of it dirty. That paste is, I love it, and the light paste, the only difference is it is lighter. So if you are um, wanting to put texture on your layout, or a card and or a canvas even and you don't want a lot of weight use the light paste it's so cool it's very very light and it, I think it dries faster so there you go we have our um, paste on the tag and just a little tip run the edges with your finger and get the hard run over off or those dry hard and then they could chip off okay so that's done we're just gonna set that let me wipe this up real quickly and then we're going to add the next ingredient my hands are like full I need three hands <laughs> it's like when I had a lot of kids and you need like four hands right all right while this is still wet we want to go ahead and put our art sugar on top of it. Just clean my stencil. You want to do that. Sometimes I keep a little um, bucket in here with some water and when I'm scrapping I just throw everything that needs washing in there and then I don't ruin my stencils. It's a great idea if you don't have a sink near you. All right so we have art sugar. It's beautiful. It's super super fine. 
granulated glitter. And all I do is take some copy paper, crease it down the middle. Let's go this way. And we're just going to spray, sprinkle this on top. Literally, it's just like a recipe. Sprink a little dash of this and a little sprinkle of that. It doesn't matter how much you sprinkle on. We're going to take the excess back with us and get it back in the bottle. So don't worry about, about dumping the whole bottle on. Okay, which I basically am doing. I mean, seriously, sugar can't have too much of that. Okay, and then tap it off. And if your tag still slightly damp like mine, you're going to get a little bit on your color bloom spray too. It does uh, it's so beautiful. If you could see how shimmery it is, it's really really pretty. And it's a very fine, elegant kind of shimmer because it the art sugar is just super fine. Dump that back in there. See? You hardly used any. That jar is almost full. So we're going to let that um, dry. And one little tip, if you're really worried about the sugar coming off when people touch it, you can spray and seal anything. Just use like a Krylon sealer or a fixative spray and it will put a thin um, layer on top so the glitter doesn't rub off. Another tip is when the paste is slightly drier, just to take a piece of cardstock and pat down gently and it will press the sugar in to that top layer but don't press it too much. You don't want to lose your dimension. Okay we're going to set that aside and we are going to go to our oh you know what I forgot to do I forgot to spray my little butterfly. Let me do that real quick. The butterfly is kind of an issue. I it's I need to color it but I want to show you the Sizzix dyes too, so I'm just going to spray it real quickly and then um, when I pull out the Sizzix I'll do another butterfly just so this one has time to dry. That's one of the new Sizzix dyes with Prima from the Flora Grande line. It's just really fun. So let's set that aside so we don't have a wet butterfly later. And then we are going to, the yellow one's drying really nicely. And it doesn't have any art mediums on the base. So what we're going to do right now is go into the next step of decorating the yellow tag. I have so, I have so much stuff on my table. I'm moving stuff off as I can because there's too much. Okay, so on the yellow tag there's this sparkly doily. And that's what we're going to make next. So it's really fun. I love it. Prima came out with doily dyes. Oh my gosh. I thought I died and went to heaven. I was buying doilies like in bulk because I love them. And to have your own doily dye, and we have multiple designs, um, you can run this through any paper. It's gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is I am going to run it through with my watercolor paper pad and this is perfect it's an A4 so when you take your paper pad you can cut it right down the middle this way and it will create um, two pieces of paper which you can score and fold for two normal size cards like the most popular size also if you do that and cut it down the middle let me go, here's mine I already pre-cut it fits in your big shot perfectly because a full sheet like this won't fit. Okay, and the reason I'm using the watercolor paper pad is because I'm going to be adding art mediums to it, and regular paper is not going to be able to handle it. So it's really nice and thick, and the die will cut it perfectly. All right, so let me get my my big shot on screen. Okay, my um, cutting boards are so warped <laughs> I should show you okay that one's not as bad as the top one if you're having problems cutting your dies perfectly this is probably why okay but I start with the extended multiple purpose platform on the bottom 
and that is Sizzix has that for uh, thinner dies. Then I put a cutting plate down. The next thing I do is put my die. I know it sounds, you can do it either way. I like to put my die, and remember that butterfly that I sprayed? We'll put that one right there. We're going to put the paper on top. Make sure your dies are covered with paper. My warped sheet, it's really pathetic. I really, really need to get a new one. Now, from practice, I know, because my sheet's warped, I need just a tiny bit um, more thickness. And I just throw in an old Prima package, or you could use like copy paper, anything like that, will just to add a little bit more thickness. Okay. And I always run my intricate dies through both ways. Now, it, before you take everything off, remove that, and you can see whether the die cut or not. Now, I only had the packaging going part way out, and you can see the butterfly didn't. My board is really warped, so it has problems. All you have to do is just run it through one more time. Move that packaging over further. And then on the way back, I'm going to slide it over by the butterfly. I've probably cut a hundred dies with this warped board. <laughs> so now we got everything cut through really well. So if your dies are not cutting through, you probably just need to stick a, a little bit more thickness in there. So here we have our die and our butterfly, and we can put the puddle bug or the big shot away. And um, any questions on that? Everybody's machine might be a little bit thicker or thinner than another one. So this is the best way to like get a custom um, fit for yours. And once I figured out what worked, I just left that piece of packaging right there. All right, so there's a new tool by Spellbinders that like runs a bristle through and poke, gets all of these out. And I have one ordered, but it did not get here. So I bang mine a couple times and get the majority of them out. And then you can just sit and poke them. Or somebody told me they use a toothbrush. They pop out so quickly. I can't wait to get that tool from um, the Spellbinders tool. I forget what it's called, but it is going to be a blast just running it over and not having to poke 100 holes. So the one I actually did one of these ahead, and last night I had I ran it through, and it like had every hole out of it except maybe three. All right, most of them are out. Just for speeding things up, let's go ahead and pop the paper out. And there's little poke holes on each of our dies. And when you push it, it pushes the paper off from the die. And this is really thick paper. Okay. We'll just pretend it's perfect perfect for time's sake. I really needed to knock about six more of those out. And then the butterfly is the same way. You just want to pop your holes out and then pull it off, and you will get a cute little butterfly like that. Okay? We'll just pretend that's done. So bang, tap your die on a hard surface a little bit. Most of those will fall right out. Now, what I did with this is I took some of our soft matte gel and I'm going to use our glitter set and I pulled out this green because it matched the one in the paper. Alright, so I, all you need is a, a paintbrush. I almost said toothbrush. We don't need a toothbrush for this. <laughs> and any questions on this so far? Okay, we're going to go ahead and apply the matte gel. One little thing with the gels and paste, any art medium really, if you get it into your cap or on the side of your threads, it can seal your cap on and you ha will have a, a hard time getting that off. So I make sure mine's really clean before I screw my cap back on. All we're going to do is quickly spread this on. You don't want to put a super heavy coat 
because it starts to soften the paper up even though it's watercolor paper I tried this like four different times with different techniques yep it's starting to soften it up because I moved it with my finger I got most of it covered and it's wet we're going to take it put it on a piece of paper okay let me move that up just a little for this step because I have my art medium underneath here I'm making a mess on my table and quickly sprinkle your glitter on it and that gel is going to hold that glitter on so well and don't worry about sprinkling out too much we're going to dump the rest back in okay now I'm going to do a really quick job on this of course yours is going to be perfect right and you pick that up and tap it off and you're going to have just this sparkly doily that's amazing let it dry on uh, a mat a surface like this what's it called a mat <sighs> I swear sometimes when I'm teaching I lose words and um, you just don't want it to dry on paper it will adhere it to the paper and then put your cover back on wash your brush and then like I always go just go around and wipe this um, wipe the threads off and then I never have problems getting my cover back on you can also Vaseline it or put saran wrap so there's a layer between the cover and then the art medium itself okay all right so we're gonna dump our glitter back let's see if we can get this wiped up real quickly gel it is the stickiest stuff ever it will adhere anything so if you get it and let it dry on your brushes and stuff, you're probably going to ruin them. So clean it up as fast as you can. Okay, I'm going to dump my glitter back in here with my folded paper. This is such a advanced technique here. Okay, that was sarcasm. Oops, and I, I spilled a little. Don't tell anyone. All right. So we have that done. And I know mine's not perfect, just for time's sake. My other one on my tag is almost perfect. Okay, so just this is what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> all right, any questions on all of the, the art techniques so far? Oops. You could even sprinkle a little bit of the um, art sugar on your butterfly when it's wet. It's just, um, it should should stick to it because the bloom spray has a bit of a adhesive or binding agent in there, so it should work for that. All right, are we ready to move on? I'm trying to go really quickly because I always go over my hour because I have so much to say. <gasps> so let's go ahead and... Um, do the yellow actually let's do the blue because the yellow one's still not quite dry so what we're going to do now is just start building the paper we're going to make this little um round center piece kind of the highlight and then we are going to build the background and then pop it together it comes together really quickly once you do that so we're going to take this and just move it off to the side and go grab some of our really cute paper You guys will have to let me know if you have questions because I get teaching and then I didn't look at the chat because I have so much to fit in. So the tags basically use this sheet of paper and I just use this corner from here to here and I didn't really measure it. I looked at it and eyeballed what I liked and that's what I cut out. So this is the um, Cup of Joe paper from the Coffee Break collection. And I'm just going to eyeball it. And then I'll tell you how, let's see. It's five and a half inches. And I think our tags, let's see, they are three and a half. So let's just do that. Let's just cut it right here. I like to cut mine a little bit wider 
and manually trim it along the side. I don't know why, just because I've cut short before and if you cut it too thin you've ruined your, your whole piece of paper. And then we want to go five and a half inches up, so about right here. And you know what? No one's going to know if it's not perfect. And while we're at it, let's cut the paper for the yellow tag. And for that one, I use this other corner. And it's a little bit longer. And um, I punched the bottom. So let's go to about here. And that's all I do is eyeball it and then I nick it with my fingernail. It's, I mean, seriously, it's really technical, right? And look for that little fingernail. Okay, so where did it go? <laughs> oh, it's three and a half inches wide. That's why I don't have it. And we nick the other one. All right. So this is for the yellow tag, and we're gonna just gonna set that aside. Might as well cut the paper at the same time. To save us some time. Now this one, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take some lace. Prima has some new lace. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Okay, and we're just going to glue on the top and the bottom. So let me go ahead and do that. This piece was five and a half inches by the, the width of your tag, and the, I think those tags are three and a half. And of course, you can adjust this for any tag size you have. I, sometimes I set my tag right on top of the paper and then just cut around it. Sometimes that's the best way to get a really perfect cut. How are we doing? I am running out of glue. Anybody else? It's like I can never have enough glue in my house. We want to get... I'm using Fabri-Tac because that works so well with our lace, of course. And you just run a thin thread as close as you can get to the, to the top of the paper, the edge of the paper. This lace is so pretty. And then just kind of scoot it up to the edge. Let's see how... Oh, this one, I did not get very close to the edge. Then we're going to trim that off. I think I've cut too much metal with my scissors. Okay. The next layer we're going to do, are it's just pink strips. So honestly, you can cut your piece of paper or you can use um, scrap pieces or your 6x6 six six tag, 6x6 um, six six book, or whatever you want to use for that. So let me just grab, I had scraps left from my last one that I'm going to use. And all I'm going to do is um, cut two pieces, one for the top and one for the bottom, and then punch one and cut the other. So it's three and a half inches wide. or just use your tag as and then you just want a couple strips this one's going to be for the top so it's thinner because I only need a little rip, little little piece and this one's going to be punched so I'm going to make this one just a little bit wider so I can hold it while it goes into the punch okay so where are my pinking shears hang on one second they're on my other table I love pinking shears. I know they're for sewing, but I use them all the time. Any fancy edge scissors will work for this. You just want a cute little decorative edge. That's going to be for the top like that. And then for this piece, we're going to pull out an edge punch. Just pick one you like. I went with this bubble theme, right? With the bubble tea and the steaming and it's kind of punny. So I found this one. I love this punch. Seriously, I use it all the time. Probably too much and you're probably sick of seeing it. <laughs> Alright. 
and that's all you need to do. And I did not ink any of the edges on this tag because it has a it's very vintage and retro, or I should say vintage in a in a fun retro way. So I can't kind of wanted to keep it cleaner. And all we're gonna do is go ahead and flip that tag over. See my glue. I like full bottles of glue. I hate sitting and waiting for it to get down to the bottom. And I looked everywhere for another bottle of glue this morning. I'm like, I use it way too fast. So just put glue on your top and bottom. Let me figure out which one is the top and which is the bottom. And then just set it on there. Just eyeball it. Same with this one. It does. It's not very good with me doing pink on pink. With that pink mat. Sorry. So set it on there like this. And once we get that all glued together, we'll trim the edges. Okay, we had that pink paper. And I should I probably should have been really careful. Am I gonna fit? I have this huge punch by Marby. It's a scallop punch. And I want to do uh, one of these floral scallop punches. I barely had enough left. How's that for using your scraps? So while this is drying, I'll trim it when I put it on the tag. We're going to go ahead and start building this piece. So we have this one. Here we go on the, let's, let's just use that for contrast. And then we want to get a couple items out. We need some lace and we need our three by four pad, which I have been like toting all over and where did I set it? Okay, I know it's here somewhere. Here it is. So this is what we're going to use. And I'm going to grab another punch. If you love punches, this is such a great way to build layers. So I pulled out two round ones and I think I actually used the pink one. We're just going to take one of our cards and I took a, the minty turquoise card and I punched a circle out of it. So easy. So let's go ahead and do that. You know, this is really complicated, right? <laughs> But this is a great way. I love the 3x4 cards because they have so many sheets in there for little pieces like this. So you don't have to use all your big sheets up. So what we're going to do, I love to put lace underneath like this and build up layers. We're going to glue the lace onto the blue circle. So let's set that pink one aside. Flip that over. And um, we're just going to do a little bit at a time. I actually think I need that black paper and I just got glue on it. We'll see. So let's go ahead and start. And it's all you do is pinch and I, well, the first piece hold down for a second and then just kind of squish it with your thumb while you're gathering it as you go around. And this is why you only do a little bit, a couple inches at a time. The glue will dry too quickly if you try um, too much. And you can see how that's that's coming. Okay. So let's hurry up and do this one. I love this technique. I do this on my layouts. You don't have to do it on a circle. You can do it like under a photo or around a photo mat. Oh, it just adds that fun little feminine touch. I almost think this lace looks like it was from the 50s. It fit, I think it fits this line really well. 
My glue's drying already. See why you can't do too much ahead? So just set it and then just squish it in there. Now I know you guys would do a perfect job on this. I'm just going to do it as fast as I can. It's okay to set the lace, get a little glue on it, and then start smushing it. Is that a technical term, smushing? I think it should be. Scrunching, is that better? I seriously make up words all the time. They sound like it. they should be real, real terms. There we go. Let's, all right, so that's set to go, just like that. How cute is that? And you know what? You can use foam to set, put things together or foam tape. If it's not on a layout, I just use cardboard. It's great for recycling and it's cheap. So I'm just going to stick a piece of cardboard on there and plop that baby right here in the center of my pink um, medallion. And then we are going to pull out... Okay, hang on, I, I put everything, I'm so organized, I just gotta get to the right pile. We're gonna pull out our 3D stickers. And these were featured on the blog yesterday. Oh my gosh, these are so, so cute. They have foil on them, they're just super cute. So on this one, we use, look, they already come all sticky and everything. Just put it a little bit closer to the top, so you, and to the left side, so you have room for a flower and some, embellishments okay we are almost done with this I know I'm scaring Carrie but seriously now it's just a matter of putting it together so we have our tag and we have um, our paper and all we're going to do right now is just trim off these edges Okay, this one's going to have to go this way. We might have to trim again to actually make it fit. This is going to get glued onto here. And now that we have all the pieces, it's going to build really quickly. This back piece, I would just glue on. I wouldn't use any foam for this because we can add so much more dimension with the other pieces. There we go. It, it does need to be trimmed a bit. Just pretend I did that. Okay, we're going to take our medallion next and again use some foam or cardboard. Anybody else use cardboard or am I, is this just like a ghetto thing I do? Well, I do live in Kentucky now so I could call it hillbilly but I started it when I wasn't living here so. I just think, man, everybody has cardboard laying around, and why throw it away? All right. Our little butterfly's ready to be tucked in here. He's just going to go, or she, it's just going to go right here. You know what? I did use foam on that one. So before I put him all the way down, um, you can use cardboard. But seriously, it's a little tiny piece, so let's put one little piece of foam in there so he, he flits up. Let's do two. We need this one to be a lot taller. Okay, so two pieces of foam. Just tuck that little butterfly in there, and then we're going to pull out some flowers. These are gorgeous. Coffee Break 578466. You know what, Carrie? I don't remember the name on these. Insight? No, I could be totally messing that up. In fact, I think I use the Epiphany flowers like this, but because um, they didn't have the coffee break, but I think they all match. They are all, all so cute. I don't think you can go wrong with whatever flowers you pick. So I always put my flowers on and tuck them in here and there, wherever you think you need a little bit um, extra pizzazz. Let's go down here. Am I off camera? Are we doing okay? 
all you can see is my mess. I usually am not messy. I like to clean as I go. I kind of like that boulder blue. The turquoise. It's really cute. Okay, I can finish this in one minute. We're going to take some blue tulle. All I do is tie a bow so I have something to like glue. And then if you want fancy edges, use your pinking shear. That's just going to go right here and create a nice little surface to um, glue everything else on. Carrie's going to time me because did I just say I could do this in a minute? We have yellow wire and wire thread. Let's get a little bit more. Tie a quick bow. When I tie my bows for this kind of stuff, I don't start with the knot. I go right into making the, the two loops because it's flatter. You don't get as much bulk then. And um, it's just easier to control it. So let's get on there, that one. Make sure it's glued. And then we're going to top it off with some really, really cute flowers. Which, okay, I can't remember, Carrie, what flower this is. And I didn't get another package. What is wrong with me? But aren't they adorable? I used a polka dot on that one, and this one has some text on it. We're going to just top that right there. Okay? And it needs a little black bow on the top just to pull out some, some contrast. And this is seam binding. Again, start with the loops and tie a quick bow. Oops. Okay. You know how to tie a bow better than me. Seriously, when I, <laughs> I have other people tie my bows sometimes because I am not the best at it. There we go. Chop it. Seriously, how fast did this come together? And you know what? I'm going to cover up the hole with this. So I know it's gluing to my table right now, but when it's dry, it's good to go. So there's the first tag. And the second tag probably will take me five minutes, maybe a little bit longer to put together. Because once you actually have all your pieces, it comes together so fast. Okay, maybe I lied. It might be longer. But um, I know if you guys need to go, that's fine. If you want to stay, we'll go ahead and finish the yellow tag. We're kind of just using some of the same elements, but we're just going to add some crystal beads and use some gel medium on this one. So here's the yellow one. Any questions on the blue tag? Because I'm just going to work. Let's punch the bottom of this one real quick. You know what the supplies, if you got them, you could make so many cute tags out of this. Multiples. And you know, I love putting my tags on um, gifts. Sometimes I use them on a layout as like the title area. And sometimes I just save them and put them up on my shelf. So there we go. We have our first layer ready. And we need to add a little bit of lace because I tried to co coordinate um, the two tags a little bit and save on some of the supplies if you're if you're trying to get them. So we use the same lace and just run a little strip of it up at the top. Add that little kitschy effect. Yeah, okay. And then slide it up so it actually shows Sharon. Okay. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and glue this down. Any questions on the tags or any of the steps we've done so far? I'm really sorry I don't have the packaging for that flower. I might actually have it, 
I have to go dig though. Oops. Let's not go upside down because we're talking. And we can trim this off. So if I'm going to do that, I want, actually want this side flush because it has the cute little pattern on it. And we will trim that when we're done. And then we're just going to make two little banners out of scrap paper. So fine paper that, like you can use the leftovers from this. And they're about an inch, inch and a half maybe an inch and a quarter on the first one. So make two quick banners. And you know, I cheated on this one. I It wasn't as long as I needed it to be. So I, on banners, if you have something else on top of it, you can snip it in the middle and stretch it or shorten it. Okay, that looks good. I think I need to ink the edges. Let's just pretend I did that so we can be faster. <laughs> so when I glue my banners where I creased it, that's the only place I put the glue so that I can get a lot of dimension off of that banner. And I can tuck things under it if I want to. Then I need a little bit of yellow paper and I can either use my tag pad or any of the extra pieces I have. Actually, I really like this. So we're just going to cut this one an inch wide. It's going to be a little bit thinner. And I did not tell you how long the other one was. <gasps> Sorry. This one's five inches and this one's probably six. Yes. So make this one about an inch shorter. And you know what? I eyeball it. It's okay to do that. Notch your corners. And layering two banners or three banners is just really cute. I think it's adorable. And you know what? I maybe cut this one too. Okay, so let's just say it's too short. I'm going to show you how I did this. I put this one over here and take your other piece and put it wherever you need it. And nobody will ever know that you cut that too short because you're going to put your other pieces right on top of it. Right? Okay, so now all we're going to do is we are going to take, do you remember that doily with the glitter? We are going to go ahead and take that and I think it's dry enough. We can use this one. I actually made an extra one. That's going to go down. And I want the pieces with the glitter, more glitter on the sides. And we're going to staple that. I think that works the best for kind of catching. Whoops. Nobody ever has their staple stapler jam, right? Only me. So go ahead and like staple that. And if it doesn't work this time, we're going to it's jammed. We'll just put a little bit of glue here and there and you can also use gel medium and that will really really adhere it. You don't need to glue the whole back just a couple little pieces to make sure it sticks down because you're gonna put so much other stuff on top of it. Okay and now we're just building layers and it's it's uh, honestly it's really quick I promise I just got to find my yellow paper. So you can go through your paper pad and like pull out any color you want. Did I use all my yellow up? I could very well have done that. Let's switch it up then. You guys want to do that? Let's pick a different color. It's okay. Let's use this one. Um, so all I did was I rounded the corners on it because I love that retro look. So just get a corner rounder and round your corners and you'll get that really cute 50s look. 60s, whatever it is. Okay. And um, let's see, I only used part of it. So you kind of want to measure. I'll measure for you for those of you who like 
like to do things exact, which normally I do. I should only round it two of those corners. So just trim your card down to two and a half. This is a great way to use up scraps, isn't it? And what you're going to do, I'm going to put them side by side so you can kind of see how I'm building. And then we have a little bit of mint, that turquoise mint paper. And we're going to put a sticker on that. But of course, you can pick out any color you want. So the backs on the, these cards are gorgeous. And you know, for this one, here's what I did. I took my sticker and I plopped it on there and then I trimmed around it. I just found that to be easier. So I kind of like put it right here and then I just trimmed around the sticker and it, it just seemed, I know they're dimensional, but it'll work. Leave a little bit extra on the bottom so you can tuck some flowers in. And then you want to round those corners real quick. All right, maybe that wasn't the best idea. Sometimes I, I seriously wonder what I am doing. <laughs> we will just pretend we rounded those. Don't stick your, your sticker on first. But you want a really fun feel for it. So it doesn't have to be perfect, right? I hand rounded them. They're not perfect. It's okay. And we are going to stick that on here and we're going to use that cardboard again. Okay, I only need three more minutes. Are you guys still with me? I, the beginning takes so long to do all the art mediums and then it gets so much faster at the end when you're just putting stuff together. Let's see, we need to glue this one down too. So let's go ahead and build this up. And that's what I did when my tags were drying. I like worked on these center focal points. Oops. And when my tags were done drying, I had these ready to go. You could even use cardboard on this layer and really pop your tag up. How cute is that? All those fun little coffee break designs, layering. Bye, Carrie. See ya. And you know what? I didn't show this on um, the sample because I didn't have it, but I just got these. These are the stick pins for the coffee break line. Oh my gosh. They're so cute. They're wood. And the item number on this is 576394. So cute. And all I did, I took this love one and I stuck it in there. So, have one open. What do you guys want on this one? I have coffee time, I have a donut. I mean, seriously, how cute. Let's do the donut. Donuts and coffee. They're sticky on the back. So what you want to do is just find a little hole in, in there and tuck it in. And I need to grab my red string because I wanted a focal point on there and I felt like I was getting so many layers. So this is our new jute string. And um, it is perfect for adding this fun little trendy touch a lot of people do. Let's, let me take that off real quick and get the thread on there first. And you know what, this part does not need to be perfect at all. You are just going to Loop it around about three times. I'm trying to figure out why my stapler is not working. Because this is where you really do need to staple. But um, you can glue it too. My stapler is just jammed. That is disappointing. I love that thing. Just put a little tab of glue in a couple spots. You can put it where you can't see it. And it will hold that thread down there. And you just get a really cute little effect with that. Do you guys like wrapping the thread around? I just think it's so fun. So let's finish our third piece. 
and bring it down to here. And when I unclog my stapler, I'm going to staple this down so it's held really firmly. So three, three wraps of the, the red jute. And then we are going to go ahead and start adding flowers. I'm just going to dump them out. I took a bunch of flowers that I had. And I love these new roses. Those look so cute on there. Do a polka dot one right here. One of these. And then I need a couple up here. And this is what I do. I like do a dry run. See how I like it. And move things around before I glue them down. So then it looks, when I glue it down, I like it. So I put my flowers on. I usually take a picture with my phone so I remember where everything was. You know how you can take it off and then you can't get it perfect again? Yeah, I do that all the time. All right, I think I like it like that. So let's go ahead and glue a black bow down. And we're just gonna stick that right there. And you know that doily, it's really thick. It is. It held up so well to the art mediums. And I just love it. It's like a little bit of sparkle and pizzazz sticking out. If you have a coffee lover, a friend, or someone, you know, your sister or you, this would be so cute with a little gift card in there to a Starbucks or a little tea shop. You could, like, maybe not glue the whole top and stick a, a gift card in there. Wouldn't that be cute? Or put it on the back. Okay. The main decorations are done. I want to pop this up on the back because I don't want this little donut going flat. Nobody likes flat donuts. So I know it has sticky on it, but I'm going to put a little bit of foam on there and just tuck this baby in like that. And all we only have one step left. Okay? Oh gosh, I just got a text that my grandbabies are watching. So I have to say hi. Hi, I'm Mariah and Madeline. I love those girls. Gosh, they're so fun. Who ever said grandbabies would be funner, more fun, sorry, than your own kids? <laughs> okay, I need some matte gel. And I need my glass beads. And what we're going to do is make fun little um, bubbles on here. Can you guys see that at all? Like a teapot that bubbles over. Okay, that was the whole point of the glass beads because it's so cool. All right. It may be a little corny, but I just thought that was fun. So let me just grab some gel. And that's what you want to use because it will hold the beads on so well and I took the gel and I set it behind me and then I forgot where I put it you can also glue, glue glass beads on but seriously use the gel it will keep it on there permanently and I'm just going to set it on a piece of paper because I'm going to collect the glass beads that are extra and I am going to roll those back into their bottle so oh that's how you can make a mess with this gel any questions on this you're gonna take um, the gel and just dab it in spots and what I did is I kind of tried to make it look like it was coming out of the teapot and bubbling over down the card I know is that corny here's it where it's spilt on the stove <laughs> And this dries clear, so don't worry about um, the blotches, okay? And you can use either matte or um, the glossy. I'm just trying to see if I have enough. I think that's good. So dab it on with a brush. You, can, you could use your finger. 
and um, you want to take your glass bead gels or glass beads now okay and these are crystal and that's part of Finnebear's new line oh my gosh love these and just sprinkle them over the spots where you have your gel and this part you want to just let it dry you can use your heat gun I just let mine dry overnight and then I shook off the extras okay okay I told Carrie I'd probably be 10 minutes over I'm 12 I'm gonna get fired are you guys okay what a fun way to use these glass beads make your own little steamy bubbling over coffee break tags oops I forgot to put them up here by the teapot and if you think they're not sticking stick a little bit more gel on there I don't want to tap them off until it totally dries so I'm gonna leave it like this and when you're done you're gonna put a big black bow on the top no you're not you're gonna put some red twine or you could do a black bow and there we go so there's the second tag and here is the first tag all right I think we finished do you guys have any questions I'm gonna flip the camera up I like been working furiously and I told you it's hot here today Woof. Do you, how are you guys doing okay so I hope okay so which one did I do today do you want to pick up this one all sparkly and we use the paste and the art sugar and then this one okay that's the one that's wet we used the glitter, the watercolor paper, um, gel, and the fun little crystal beads. How cool are those? Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. If Maddie, May, and Amari are still on, hi from Nana. You got to get the new art mediums because we're going to be playing and putting more art recipes together and I have the recipes for this and pictures of them and a whole list of ingredients on my blog um, you can probably find it on Prima too I like was posting it everywhere okay so announcements real quick special deliveries coming September 15th if you get it this month you are going to get okay where did I put it I have stuff everywhere you'll get a really cute Finnebar Finnebear Prima art medium booklet which has all our art mediums in there and tells how to use it and has pictures and it's really cool and that special delivery kit is jam-packed we also have art venture okay special delivery Delana might be able to link you in go to our Facebook page Prima marketing flowers and hit um, oh it's live with Prima I keep doing that it's on live with Prima.com and, and we'll put links up on our Facebook and blog for you Art Venture is in California January 7th and 8th or 6th and 7th and you'll be playing with all our new lines so that's fun and um, Jamie is Thursday night and Jamie was here today she's going to be using her bloom collection line and make a really cool shirt that you can wear with her stencils oh my gosh we all need a bloom girl that's customized kind of fair personality right okay well thank you for joining me today I hope you learned something sorry for running so quickly you know we only get an hour to pack all that stuff in and I try to give you as much information but if you have questions let me know hit me up on the blog or Facebook and um, I'll try to answer any questions you have okay all right bye bye